everybody. Welcome back to my workshop and welcome back to my garage. This is going to be video number two on my Pango Music Flying V kit that we're working on. And what we're going to be covering in today's video is getting the neck glued in. I want to remind everybody this is a sponsored video by Pango Music. They were kind enough to send me the kit. So thank you very much for doing that. Also, they have told me that if anybody's interested in buying a kit, make a comment below and what I'll do is I'll forward your name up to Pango Music and what they can do is look at giving you a discount on the kit that you purchase. So if you want to get a discount on the kit, please let me know. I'll forward your name up and we'll see what happens. So let's get rolling on this video and take a look at the process that I used to actually get the neck set into the guitar to make sure the brake angle was correct, the little bit of finessing that I had to do to the neck pocket uh, to have it fit to get that perfect fit that I wanted and getting the glue up done. So let's get rolling. All right, so what we're getting ready to do right now is I'm doing the preliminary checks before I glue the neck in. And as you can see, I've got my bridge just set in place. I've got a 1 16th inch spacer beneath it just to raise it up a little bit. I'm going to take the straight edge and lay it across the neck, across the frets. And with the bridge in place, as you can see, as I slide this back, it just does come over the top of the bridge. You see here on the E and the E, it slides right over. So this is going to be perfect. That's the right brake angle. The next thing we're going to do before we glue the neck in, is I want to make sure the neck is straight with the center line of the body. What I'm going to do is with the neck in right now, I'm going to lay a straight edge down each side, draw a line, and that way I can determine based off my bridge position holes right here and off my pickup cavity that everything is in line with that. So let's get rolling with that. So with the straight edge down the side of the neck, following the taper of the neck, just drawing a couple lines or across the bridge posts and the pickup cavity. And do the same on this side. So when I drew the center lines, I've got my line, I drew it between the pickups and then to here and I can see that it crosses the bridge post area right on the very inside of it and then drawing the line across through here, exact same thing. But what I'm gonna do, just to make sure, is I'm gonna go ahead and use my center finding ruler to find the center on this, just to make sure. There's the center by that line, and now just connect these two. go. There's a center line established. I've measured and this is the center line between that as I measured from the pickups, the center line of the pickups, I went from the outside of the cavity to the outside of the cavity and it's the same there. So I know that my neck is in true and straight. What I did off camera is I did a little bit of finessing on the neck joint. So you can see what I've done is I've leveled it up to where you can see where that tilt is there. I've matched that on both sides making sure that my neck is straight. On almost any kit guitar you're gonna buy or even when you're making one from scratch, you've always gotta finesse the neck pocket just a little bit to get that neck joint to fit perfectly, uh, to make that neck fit perfectly into the body. What I've got is I just have a square piece of oak that I use as a sanding block. I attach a piece of sandpaper on it, glued it onto the side, and that way I can maintain, and it's flat on the end, that way I can maintain a 90 degree inside my neck pocket as I'm sanding. And what I did on this one, I had to take a little bit more off the top in this area here uh, to, to square it up true. But after doing that, what you can see is I've got a really nice fit now on that neck. When this glues up, it's gonna be really nice. So there's no gaps in there. It's straight and it's level. I've measured the distance from the bottom of the fretboard to the edge of the body on both sides and they're both equal. So everything's telling me that that neck is in there straight and I rechecked my center to make sure that everything stayed center. So now that I've verified my center lines and I know that the neck is in straight and I know I got the proper brake angle on the neck to the body that's gonna allow for proper clearance of the bridge and the strings going over the bridge, it's now time to go ahead and prep this to get the neck glued in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean both surfaces, I'm gonna clean the neck heel and I'm gonna clean the internal neck pocket and I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to glue these two things together. So in preparation for glue up, I've got some clamps ready to go. I've got the surfaces cleaned 
on both the body and the neck. Just use some naphtha to clean those up, make sure there was no oils or anything like that. I've got a clamping call uh, that I can set on top of my neck to clamp down. That way I'm not resting right on the frets. It's got some cork in there to uh, cushion that against the fret so I don't dig into it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to put some glue in here. When you're doing your glue up, you want to make sure that you have enough glue in there to where you're going to have some squeeze out of the joint. That way it lets you know that everything's covered. But the thing to remember is the more squeeze out you have, that's just wasted glue. So you don't need a ton of squeeze out. You don't need to put just a boatload of glue in there. You need to put enough in there to get the surfaces glued up. And then just press these together. And then I'm going to clean up as much glue as I can. Now I'm just going to clamp these down. And now as you can see, got good squeeze out there, along the joint there, and on the side there, there's just the smallest amount, which is perfect. So that's telling me that I've got a good seat on my neck and I've got squeeze out inside my cavity there. So now what we're going to do is just going to leave this clamped up. Make sure everything is straight like it's supposed to be. It is. So now it's just going to leave this clamped up. I always leave it for 24 hours. It says you only have to leave it for an hour or for 30 minutes. I always leave it for 24. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and leave this clamped overnight and come back tomorrow and see what we got. So it's been 24 hours now. Uh, this has been left in the clamps for the 24 hours. Uh, so now it's time to go ahead and remove the clamps and see how the glue up went. All right, this looks really, really good. So let's bring this in here. So you can see down in the cavity, it's all glued. Nice squeeze out all the way around. No gaps anywhere. Everything looks good there. You can see the neck angle a little bit better, the break angle, as you watch the binding. The binding's touching the binding right here, and then it comes up probably about a, almost an eighth of an inch there at the back and the same on this side. All right, so basically what I've done is I've just got a 16th inch piece of wood that's sitting underneath here. And I've got a little bit of a ridge right there on the uh, bridge itself. So it's sitting up about 3 seconds of an inch. So just a little bit more than a 16th. Keep in mind that there are grooves cut into the bridge and the strings are gonna set down in those. So the string height's gonna drop a little bit from what the top of this top of this saddle is. So when I set the saddle, when I set the bridge on top of that 16th inch piece of wood, which basically simulates the distance of the bushing sitting in the body and the adjustment screw sitting up. As I come to it, I just do touch the top of the saddle. Not down into the V, but just to the touch. And this saddle will go down, this will go down a little bit, the bridge will go down a little bit further than that. And if I want a little bit more accurate measurement of it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to set a couple pieces of wood under here, which is basically going to simulate my string height of the, of the string sitting atop. Not quite, but pretty close. You can see that I slide right over top of the top of the bridge now without touching it at all, which is going to be perfect for when I put the strings on. So what that's telling me now is that my string height and my brake angle on my neck is going to be good. I've got a good glue up. So we'll be ready to start sanding. So that's going to wrap this video up. We made some good progress on it. The neck to heel joint looks really good where the glue up happened. I'm really happy with the way the glue up is. As you can see, as we went through the final check at the end, I checked to make sure that the brake angle was still good. Uh, make sure that I hadn't changed anything with that when I was doing the finessing on the neck heel. All of that looks good. So we've got good clearance to get our bridge mounted 
Uh, we'll have make sure we have adjustability on the bridge uh, so we can get the proper action set up. So that's really good too. If you like what I'm doing, please click like, click subscribe. That way you can keep up with the build as we go along. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is covering sanding and grain filling. Thank you very much for the suggestions as far as what color to paint it or what kind of dye to use. So please, if you have thoughts on that, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for stopping by the channel and take care.